Good evening. My name is Neil Bubke, and I'd like to welcome you to our live stream concert tonight, featuring two members of our own congregation, Linda Corducky and David Hine. Linda Corducky, in addition to being a member of our congregation for 20 years, is the principal flutist of the Fox Valley Symphony and teaches flute at Alverno College and Carroll University. David has been our principal organist for five years and is the adjunct instructor of choirs at Alverno. Thank you for tuning in and with no more explanation, let's enjoy the music.
much for joining us for tonight's live stream concert. It's great to have this opportunity. David and I are very excited to be here and we've brought a couple colleagues with us as well. Uh, one small correction uh, in my bio, uh, I, I actually don't teach at Carroll University. I am uh, on the adjunct faculty teaching in the music department at Concordia University of Wisconsin. The first piece that you heard was by Chopin. It was his variations on a theme of Rossini. Uh, it is an unusual work for Chopin. I'm sure you know Chopin is associated with solo piano works. This is the only work he wrote for the flute, and he probably wrote it as a teenager uh, for his father, who was a flutist, or a family friend who was a flutist. Uh, it's one of my favorites to perform. It's light and fun. And uh, we have a program this evening of all of our favorites uh, that we are excited to share with you. So I'll turn it over to David and he'll talk about a solo piano piece he's going to perform. Good evening, everybody. Good to be able to play for you tonight. And uh, we're glad to be, have the opportunity. Uh, as Linda said, this is a program about music that's kind of favorite. So one of the favorites that I'd like to share with you is is a suite composed by Edvard Grieg called the Holberg Suite. Uh, he originally composed it for piano, but more people probably know that work through its string orchestration, which he did a couple years after composing it as uh, a solo piano work. Um, in some ways, it's, it's looking backward in time because he's taking up the idea of using dance movements as the basis of each of the movements in the suite. And most suites that, were, that did that, use that process started with the prelude, and I'm going to share with you the prelude from the Holberg Suite this evening.
The next work on the program is a fantasy for flute and piano by the French composer Philippe Gobert. Gobert was a very important flutist in Paris in his lifetime. He was the principal flutist of the opera, and he taught flute at the Paris Conservatory, in addition to being a composer. Uh, I am proud to say that I have a connection to Gobert in that my teacher's teacher studied with Gobert. So for my students that are out there watching tonight, you have the same connection. Um, this is a really beautiful piece from uh, the turn of the 20th century. Uh, we have a wealth of French flute pieces that were written as solos um, that were meant to be test pieces for the flute students at the Paris Conservatory. Um, this one is, it has a really lovely lyrical opening, as many of them do, which is then followed with um, a more lively second movement. We hope you enjoy it.
The next piece that I'd like to perform for you is a solo flute work by the American flutist and composer Catherine Hoover. Catherine Hoover passed away in 2018 um, after having received the Lifetime Achievement Award from the National Flute Association. She, uh, in addition to being uh, a renowned flutist, um, she made her name as a composer, not only composing works for the flute, but also vocal, orchestral, and chamber works. Uh, the piece I'm going to play for you is entitled Coco Pelli. It's probably her most often performed work. Um, you may recognize the title, Coco Pelli. Uh, Coco Pelli uh, was a figure from a Native American mythology. And I'm going to show a picture. You maybe can see this. I think so. Uh, Coco Pelli actually became very popular in uh, home decor and uh, garden statuary and things in, in the last 20 years. So you've probably seen this figure. But I'm going to read to you what she writes about Coco Pelli and about this work. Coco Pelli, the flute player, was a great mahu or legendary hero of the Hopi. He is said to have led the migrations through the Southwest, the sound of his flute echoing through the great canyons and cliffs. In this piece, I have tried to capture some of this sense of spaciousness and of the Hopi's deep kinship with the land.
Next we have for you three movements from the suite for flute and jazz piano, and I should also add jazz trio since we are adding bass and drums this evening, uh, by Claude Bowling. Claude Bowling uh, is still living. I believe he's in his 90s. Uh, and uh, he's a famous uh, French jazz pianist. The renowned French flutist Jean-Pierre Rampal had heard some works that uh, Bowling had composed for classic instrument and jazz piano and asked Bowling in 1973 to compose a suite for flute and jazz piano. Uh, the suite was recorded, I believe, in 76. Do you know, David? So around, around then, in the, in the mid-70s. Uh, it, it actually became quite popular. Uh, I was first introduced to it by my high school teacher. Uh, and uh, this is the first opportunity I've had to play it since then. Uh, David actually had suggested something by Claude Bowling. And, I, was I, uh, I thought it sounded like a great idea until I started trying to learn it. <laughs> so, but it's nevertheless, it's been a great, great pleasure to try and learn it, and we hope you, that you will enjoy it as well. Yeah, be before I introduced our guests, um, do we want to talk about uh, the fact that oh, we are that's, not yes, only... Oh, yes, that's true. Yes. So, so, Lind so Linda and I, for like prior to this, the last time we performed together, I don't think we should start naming years, um, <laughs> li uh, Linda and I first got to know one another in uh, when we both arrived at the Birch Creek Music Center summer camp for uh, for high school students that's up in Door County and that would have been a long time ago <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we we along with a couple other friends or a couple others who arrived at that camp that summer just really kind of fell into a fast friendship uh, Linda Linda's and I have have been in uh, in that friendship now for probably 25 years I suppose by now I think so. and uh, so it was actually Linda who pointed out that the, that the Methodist Church here was looking for an organist. Would you mind circulating this job description to your organist colleagues to see if they would be interested? And I opened it up and thought, I know an organist colleague who's interested in this job. And uh, that's how I ended up here at the Methodist Church. And, and Linda and I have been talking now for the last few years about how much we wanted to be able to um, do a program together. And so we're happy that this has finally happened. Absolutely. <laughs> so I'd like to introduce uh, our, our colleagues that are going to join us. Uh, Rob Collier will be playing bass. Rob is a, a professor of music theory at Alverno College. Um, and uh, Charlie Short, uh, who I also have worked previously with at Alverno College and now is the uh, owner and operator of Percussion Studio MKE, did I get that right? And performs locally with Ocean's Rush. And Charlie's gonna talk a little bit about the instrument that he's performing on this evening. Hi, thanks for having me, everybody. I usually get asked questions about uh, the little box that's sitting back behind uh, uh, Linda. And it's called a cajon. It's uh, native to Peru, but it's used in um, uh, Spanish flamenco music an awful lot. And it's really a nice instrument for, um, for low volume situations, especially in rooms that have ceilings as high as this one does. It's got three main sounds on it. Uh, a slap, a bass sound, and a click sound. Uh, when you use brushes on them, you can get a swish sound, and that's what I'll be doing tonight. I think I neglected to mention the titles of the movements. The first is Baroque and Blue, and you will hear why. The second we will perform is Irlandaise, which uh, translates as an Irish woman. And the final movement we'll perform of this set is called Javanese. Enjoy.
Thank you, Rob, Charlie, David, and Linda. We've got one more piece for you tonight, and it is... So as we bring our evening to a close, we thought we might try to do something that was maybe in keeping with the season just a little bit more. Of course, uh, we are heading into the holiday season as Thanksgiving approaches and then the December holidays following after that. Uh, these are times when people come together and that looks different this year, doesn't it? Uh, we thought we would share with you a hymn tune that is commonly associated with Thanksgiving. It's We Gather Together, originally Dutch, and it's been really part of kind of American Christian church traditions now uh, for the better part of probably 150 years or so. And so this particular setting is newly composed. It's probably only about two months old uh, by Minnesota composer Daniel Kalman, who is based in Northfield, Minnesota. And so uh, we would like to offer for you this uh, reflective close to our program, the setting of We Gather Together.
Thank you very much, David and Linda. And thanks for tuning in tonight. I'd like to invite you to join us next Tuesday for Nice Girls Playing Chamber Music with Megan Heinrich on oboe, Libby Garrett on bassoon, and Teresa Drews on piano. They'll be joined by honorary nice girl, Orlando Pimentel. Tuesday night at seven o'clock. Hope to see you then. Stay safe.